Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, this is the first video uh, in uh, the course on the uh, general genetics now uh, in the uh, introductory lecture i've told you that uh, what we are going to discuss in this particular course and what will be the contents of this particular course so uh, this is the first lecture uh, the first proper lecture uh, in the subjects of the general genetics and uh, we are going to see uh, some definitions of genetics and the glorious history of genetics so the first thing is what is genetics so the genetics is uh, defined in many ways uh, for example you can define the genetics is the uh, branch of biology that is concerned with the study of heredity and variation in organisms this is one definition uh, you can also define genetics as the branch of biology that deals with heredity especially the mechanisms of heredity transmission and the variation of inherited characteristics among similar or related organisms now heredity simply mean the transfer of character from one generation to the other generation and when you talk about the variations so during the meiosis uh, in the process of the crossing over uh, genetic diversity is created and then that can be transferred to the next generation you can also define genetics as the branch of biology which is concerned with the study of genes so this should be a modern definition because you're using this term genes over here so genetics is the branch of biology which is concerned with the study of genes like genetic variations and heredity in organisms so you can define it in many ways uh, but the core remains the same that genetics is focusing on the uh, heredity and variation in organisms if you look at the uh, glorious history of genetics uh, it started very early uh, because uh, from much of the human history uh, people were unaware of the scientific details of how babies were conceived and how heredity worked so initially the uh, in the uh, you can say early history of the human beings they were not aware of the scientific details of course the babies they were conceived and clearly there was some heredity connection between the parents and the children uh, but how this uh, connection is working the mechanisms that were not readily apparent so if you look at the history it usually uh, starts with the uh, greek philosophers and these Greek philosophers had a variety of the ideas about this heredity and the transmission of characters. Uh, for example, uh, like Theoprostus, uh, one of the Greek philosophers, he proposed that the male flowers, they actually caused the uh, female flowers to ripen. This was his uh, understanding of the genetics. Uh, Hippocrates, uh, which is also known as the father of medicine, uh, he speculated that seeds they are produced by various body parts and they are transmitted to offspring at the time of the conception and if you look at the uh, darwin theory of pangenesis it is mostly based on the observation of the hippocrates where the darwin was using the term pain genes so we will discuss that in a while so uh, hippocrates he was actually of the opinion that seeds they are produced by various body parts and then the seeds are transmitted to the offsprings at the time of the conception now Aristotle, he emphasized the importance of the blood in heredity. Uh, he said that the blood supplied the generative materials for building all parts of the adult body and that that particular blood passes generative powers to the next generation. Well, he said that the male semen, he uh, referred that as the purified blood, uh, while the woman menstrual blood uh, was her equivalent to semen. And during the uh, during the transfer of the characters from one generation to another generation, the male, the semen of the uh, male, and the uh, menstrual blood of the woman, they actually mixes, uh, and the uh, characters they are transferred to the next generation. So he was actually uh, of the uh, blending inheritance school. Uh, Silas, uh, like in uh, 458 BC, he proposed that male is the parent while the female is a nurse for the young life sown within her so he was of the opinion that the uh, male is the actual parent that means that all of the characters that are transferred to the next generation that is because of the male and the female is only a nurse now in 1700 uh, after the uh, discovery of the microscope uh, some scientists speculated that they saw a little man uh, which they called homunculus 
inside each sperms and that they form a school of thought which is known as the spermists. Now what the spermists believe is that the only contribution of the female to the next generation were the womb in which the homunculus grew and the prenatal influences of the womb but the female has nothing to do with the transmission of heredity. An opposing school of thought to the spermist, there was the ovist and they believed that the future human was in the egg and the function of the sperm was only the stimulation of the growth of the egg. Now ovist thought that women carried eggs containing boy and girl children and that the gender of the offspring was determined well before conception. So if the sperm that is going to stimulate a, an egg containing a boy a boy will be born but if the sperm is going to activate uh, an egg containing a girl children a girl will be born in the next generation so these were two opposing thoughts the spermist they were totally saying that the heredity is because of the males that mean of sperms but the ovist had the opposite thoughts now another theory was the pangenesis theory which was actually an idea that the male and females formed pangenes and these pen genes, they are actually the hypothetical particles which act as a bearer of the heritable characters that can be transmitted from parent to offsprings. And this theory of the pen genesis that was actually postulated by Charles Darwin in his theory of pen genesis. So uh, as the Hippocrates said that seeds are produced in every part of the body, pen genesis theory was of the opinion that these pen genes, they are produced in every organ. Now these pen genes, uh, as they are produced in every organ, they subsequently moved through their blood to the genitals and that to the children and that, then that to the children. And this is actually the hypocrite concept uh, which the uh, Darwin produced in his theory of the pen genesis. Now the blending theories, uh, then they come uh, in the uh, early 1800th century, uh, in, the, in the 18th century. And this blending theory of inheritance, they actually subplotted the uh, spermist and the ovist during the 19th century. Now what this blending theory of inheritance mean is that the mixture of the sperm and egg, they actually result in progeny that were blend of two parents characteristics. That mean that the male and the female, they are equally responsible for the transmission of heredity from one generation to another generation. What these blenders believed is that when a black food animals that mates with a white food animal, you would expect all the resulting progeny uh, to be gray, uh, which is actually a color intermediate between the black and the white. So they are blending with each other, the black and the white. So all of the progenies, they are going to be gray in color. Of course, this is not often the case, uh, but this uh, blending theory of inheritance, they believed that the uh, males and the female characters, they blend with each other and you can expect the blending in the progenies. Uh, then come the era of the monk and the spies, the uh, great Mandel. Uh, the era uh, was uh, from 1822 to 1884. And Mendel, uh, he actually developed the uh, fundamental principles that would become the modern science of genetics. Therefore, Mendel is truly known as the uh, father of genetics. And I'll tell you uh, in the uh, Mendel's lecture that why his uh, theories and why his experiments, they were of great value to the present day genetics. Now, uh, if you talk about the like uh, 18th century in 1871, uh, the Frederick Mischer, he publishes his paper uh, identifying the presence of the nuclein, of course now known as the DNA, and the associated proteins in the cell nucleus. So from here you can say the uh, classical or the you can say uh, pre-modern era of the genetics that starts. Now in 1882, the chromosomes they were discovered by Walter Fleming and he named them is the chromosomes uh, because they were uh, stained when the cells they were dyed so they were giving color bodies uh, inside the cells so therefore they were known as the chromosomes now in 1902 uh, the mended research work was rediscovered by three bot botanists uh, one was the d varies the other one was called corins and the third one was uh, shamak and they concluded that the heredity information is contained within the chromosomes. Of course, the chromosomes they were all they were being named by the uh, Walter Fleming back in 1882. 
Now in 1904, the Walter Sutton and the Theodore Boyery, they pro pro proposes the uh, chromosome theory of heredity uh, after finding that the chromosomes uh, occur in matched pairs one is inherited from the mother and one is inherited from the father so the chromosomal theory of inheritance or the chromosome theory of heredity that dates back to like at the start of the 19th century then in 1905 the term genetics that was created by the uh, british biologist uh, william battison and the term gene and genotype they surfaced in 1909 now the sex chromosomes they were discovered following the work on the butterflies and the beetle the works of the great thomas hunt morgan so uh, in 1910 the uh, u.s scientist thomas hunt morgan he was the first to discover a sex link trait while studying the uh, fly fruit fly drosophila melanogaster and he said that the uh, uh, gene for the eye color or the trait for the eye color that is actually present on the X chromosome and it was also the first case or the first gene to be traced to a specific chromosomes. So he discovered that the genes they are present on the chromosome but he was also the inventor of the sex linked inheritance. The traits can also be present on the uh, uh, sex chromosomes. Now, in 1910, uh, the uh, Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine, it was awarded to Cossel uh, for the discovery of the five nucleotide bases like the adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine, and uracil. Then, in 1925, the, uh, it was concluded that the X-ray, they can induce mutations in the genetic material like the DNA and the RNA. In 1928, the famous experiment of the Griff, the transforming principle uh, that was discovered in the pneumococcus bacteria. Uh, and in 1944, uh, the Avery, McLeod and McCarty, they actually proved that the transforming principle, which was explained by Griff in 1928, that was actually DNA and DNA is the heredity material and not a protein as was previously suspected. Then in 1950, Erwin Chargaff, he finded that the concentration of the thymine and adenine and cytosine and guanine, they are always found in equal amount in samples of DNA. Now this suggested that A always pair with T and C always pairs with G because the concentration of the thymine and adenine, they are equal. That means they are, you can say, pairing with each other and the concentration of the G's and the C's, they are equal. And that simply means that they, that they are pairing with each other. Then in 1951, uh, the clear X-ray diffraction images of the DNA that were ca captured for the first time by uh, Rosalind Franklin. Then come the era uh, in 1951 and 52 where the uh, Hershey and Chase they conducted a series of experiments uh, at the uh, uh, Carnegie Institute of Washington in Cold Spring Harbor and they verified that the genes they were made up of the DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid. Now in 1953 uh, the famous double helix structure of DNA that was revealed by the James Watson and Francis Crick and because of this great discovery they were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1962. In uh, 1961 uh, the Crick and the uh, South African geneticist uh, Sidney Brenner they reported that the triplet of the DNA base uh, called is the nucleotides that means when three nucleotides they combine with each other so each of the uh, triplet of the three uh, nucleotides now we call that is the codon so each and every codon that holds the instruction for one of the 20 amino acids that combine with each other to form the proteins in 1973 the restriction enzymes they were discovered by boyer and he used these enzymes to cut the dna and splice it into the bacterial plasmids which was then replicated producing many copies of the inserted genes and this was actually the start of the genetic engineering, the discovery of the restriction enzymes back in 19, 1973, that was actually the dawn of the genetic engineering. In 1977, uh, Sanger developed a DNA sequencing technique, which he and his team used to sequence the first full genome of a virus. In 1978, a genetically modified bacteria, they produced the hormone insulin, 
of course, which is known as the uh, humulin these days. Uh, so the E. coli bacteria that was genetically modified to give you this hormone insulin. In uh, 1983, the gene for an inherited disorder, the Huntington's disease, that was mapped to a chromosome for the first time. Now, in 1986, uh, the polymerase chain reaction uh, that was, you can say, uh, uh, that was developed by Carrie Mullis and this PCR, it actually allowed the researcher to produce many million copies of the DNA molecule in just a few hours. So you can do a lot of things uh, with these million copies of the DNA then. Now, in 1990, the International Human Genome Project begins uh, with the goal of sequencing the entire human genetic code. And in 1990, the same year, the gene therapy was first time used successfully for the treatment of heredity uh, immune disorder, which is known as the ALEA SCID, which is actually the adenosine deaminase deficiency, uh, severe combined immuno uh, deficiency. So uh, gene therapy in 1990 that was actually used to treat the uh, ADA skid and of course the uh, treatment that was successful uh, for a very low period of time. Then in 1992, uh, the American and the British team of the scientists, they uh, revealed different techniques for testing embryo, uh, which still are in the womb for genetic diseases such as the cystic fibrosis and the hemophilia, uh, which you these days call is the prenatal testing. Uh, in 1994, the genetically modified organism, they started to emerge and the flavor savored tomatoes in 1994, uh, they were, uh, you can say the first which was available in the uh, US uh, because of their long shelf life. Now in uh, 1996, the GM tomato, which was known as the Curie, uh, that went to sale in the UK. Uh, in 1996, the first cloned animal, Dory the sheep, uh, that was born at the uh, Rosden Institute, University of Edinburgh. In 1996, uh, you can say the uh, sequencing uh, of the organism that started and the baker yeast was the first non-viral genome to be completed and that was followed by the uh, genome analysis or the genome sequences of the worm C. elegans in 1998 and then the plant uh, Arabidopsis and fruit fly Drosophila in 2000. Now in 2000, the completion of the human draft genome uh, that was happened and that was jointly announced by the US firm Celera Genomics and the Human Genome Project and this Human Genome Project was actually an international public consortium. Uh, the full sequence comprising of about 30,000 to 40,000 genes that was published in 2003. Now in 2003, uh, the first tropical fish that fluorescence bright red, that was the first genetically modified pet to go on sale in the United States of America. In 2012, in court study, they published about 30 research papers describing the active regions of the human genome, including confirmation that human genome contains like 20,687 protein coding genes. Uh, in 2013, uh, the US Supreme Court, they ruled out that naturally occurring DNA cannot be patented. Uh, in 2018, the 100K Genome Project was completed, uh, sequencing about uh, 100,000 genomes from patients affected by a rare disease or a cancer. And in 2020, following the pandemic outbreak of the COVID-19, the genome of the SARS uh, COVID-2 that was completed. So this is, you can see a little bit uh, of the history of the uh, genetics. Uh, so uh, if you like this video, uh, I hope you will go for the uh, next video as well. And in the next video, I'll be focusing on the uh, applications of the uh, genetics that why genetics is so important.